All right. Um, so uh, we'll we'll give a, a few minutes here for for people to filter in. I'm uh, emceeing the the community call here for the first time because Santi is on a train. So welcome everybody. Hope you'll be tolerant of, uh, of a new community call MC. Got a few things to cover today. A lot of progress on interprotocol, and really really excited to talk about what's happened over the last month or so. Um, as, as sort of a first milestone, we passed 500 wallets uh, for uh, the Agoric chain itself. So, um, you know, unlike other chains, uh, we have at, we had added a, uh, a a 10 build cost to buying a wallet to to interact on the Agoric VM, and so we've got 500 folks that have decided to to contribute that, uh, and that that will go back to the community um, either in the community pool or in the reserve. Um, but we've got over 500 wallets, people interacting with the PSM DAP, um, which has been great. You know, I, I think we're, we're all really excited to see that um, IST uh, activity has continued to grow, uh, user activity has continued to grow. Um, I think last I looked, we were above 1.7 million IST outstanding, um, which, again, is, is, is great to see. You know, with the, the mint limit is 5 million, we didn't expect to get anywhere near that with the PSM Live only. So um, seeing the growth has just been excellent. Uh, and I know everyone is, is really looking forward to the Vault's release, um, which we'll have more, more coming later. Um, so White Paper V1 also is coming soon. So a lot of the community members, you all reached out and added comments. Um, there's still a few, a few things that need to get updated into, into that white paper. And so that's, that's coming. Um, but really appreciate the input that everybody gave and would like to continue that uh, as, as sort of a, a process moving forward um, because that, that really has been helpful. Uh, and as IST you know, evolves into a, a fully community owned and driven entity, uh, this is, this, we're gonna need more and more support from, from uh, everyone out there. Um, beyond that, uh, we will sort of continue to post product product goals, directions on discourse and, and look for, for input from uh, everyone. You know, uh, we've already done so with uh, the, the change to the liquidation module. And so if, if you haven't seen that, please go ahead and, and take a look. Uh, a lot of that has gotten some really good uh, discussion both on discourse and then you know, directly in DMs. Uh, but really, really appreciate everyone's engagement there. We'll have a few more of those likely coming soon uh, as the Vault's release gets closer. Um, and we also released a roadmap at the beginning of the year. Um, and so that's what we're gonna cover today on, on this community call. So just uh, the quick agenda here is uh, covering IST across the cosmos, covering the vault release, covering the Oracle network, uh, bounties, and then uh, events down the line. So uh, with that, do we have Hannah up as a speaker yet? Here. No, she's joining in on mobile, so uh, we may have to move to the next item and circle back. All right, sure. Um, so um, perhaps then I'll, I'll just stay on and, and talk a little bit about the Vault's release itself. So it, this is has been the, the big effort on on the Agoric side um, and and sort of specifically around interprotocol over the last several months. Um, uh, Vault's release is really get it gets us to the full vision of what was described uh, around the agoric economy uh, minus the AMM I suppose but but really the interprotocol section of what was described around the agoric economy um, you know at, at the token launch and and um, so this has sort of been the mandate to, to build out and as we get closer, uh, it's really great to see it come together. And really, I want to highlight a couple specific things that are coming down the line. Um, from the community perspective, really what we're focused around is getting test nets up and running so that uh, people can try out the actual vaults applications, try out the um, the, the protocols themselves. And we, we're going to be looking to coordinate not only user testing, but also economic testing of the vaults. So um, that's that's all still coming together. But over the next uh, month or so, uh, a number of these plans are, are, are going to come out where we'll be looking for input and, and support from the community to help test out the, the system. Vaults, the vaults release includes contracts to actually manage the vaults, it includes the protocol reserve, which will handle accounting for um, uh, managing 
debt and and burning down debt after liquidations. We'll hold additional assets to help keep the the protocol over collateralized even further uh, beyond what the vaults allow. Um, And then we'll likely evolve post this release into more of an asset management capability um, uh, for the econ committee or or whoever the elected representatives for that end up being. Um, And so the reserve contract really is, is a V1, but is an important part of this release. And then uh, is additionally the new liquidation module, which uh, we I mentioned before ha- was written up on Discourse and is currently getting built. So um, one big thing that we want to make sure to drive as as the release comes together is bringing together liquidators who are able to bid in auctions and um, understand understand how to do that correctly, how to offload the assets that they buy uh, on external chains and um, make sure that that group exists. Um, and so if that's you, if that's something you're interested in, uh, that would be a really great way to, to make a return uh, on, on the vaults release is to act as a liquidator and help stabilize the, the protocol that way. Um, and last is the, the Oracle network itself. So, um, Many of you already know, but the Oracle network is a decentralized Oracle network uh, that's sort of running a version of Chainlink software in part adapted for the Agoric system and driven by really experienced Chainlink node operators. Uh, In particular, Simply Staking uh, has been driving that uh, decentralized network. And so we're, we're really happy to be working with them. It's, it's been a, a really great experience getting their their knowledge and, and being confident that experienced Oracle node operators will be will be uh, providing price feeds for uh, inter-protocol. And so that will go through its own testnet phase. Uh, so the launch of the Oracle network, making sure prices are coming through and uh, getting prioritized in the right way and going through uh, examples of sort of the same kinds of price declines that we've seen in the market over the last couple of years, try to try to simulate those and see how that that works uh, alongside simulating high network activity. So really excited to see that come together. And that actually hopefully should be in testnet before the end of the month, though um, there are still a few moving moving pieces there. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it to Hannah, uh, who's going to talk about progress in IST uh, across the cosmos. Thank you, Roland. Yeah, so super exciting week for us. Um, We launched two new pools on Crescent, the first being an IST staked atom pool and the second an IST B-Creep pool. Um, So the IST staked atom pool is actually the first liquid staking atom pool on Crescent. Uh, Why does that matter? Well, if you know about, if you've seen the news, you've seen that liquid staking derivatives are quite the macro trend right now. Um, So roughly $200 million worth of Atom, which is 63% of the circulating supply, is staked to secure the Cosmos network. So while that secures the network, um, until having a liquid version of that, that was locked and unable to be used in DeFi. So now that we have staked Atom, uh, users can not only earn their staking rewards, but they can also earn DeFi rewards. So it really is a win-win. Um, And the great part about our pool is that um, since IST is designed to maintain parity with the U.S. dollar and we are a Cosmos native stable token, um, we can, let's see, we can, you can, oh, sorry, Um, basically by pairing staked atom with IST, um, users can easily trade against the reference price and keep staked atom price stable relative to atom. So that is very exciting there on the Crescent pools. Uh, Another exciting partnership that we have is with ShadeSwap. So soon they are launching their phase one, which will include an IST USDC pool um, on their privacy preserving decks. And then in phase two, we'll see IST and Silk and Build Shade pools, um, both of which will be incentivized. So watch out for that as well. Also on the docket is UMI. So soon IST will be listed on UMI. We had our governance um, signaling proposal on UMI's community forum, and that went over well, 100% of votes um, to list IST on UMI. So soon holders of IST will have access to both lending and borrowing. And then finally, um, Injective, we are working with their team on some community campaigns, and you can keep a lookout for the first spot market for IST coming up as well. So 
lots of new use cases for IST holders and um, kind of permeating the ecosystem in as many ways as possible. So exciting things there. And let's see, I will pass it back to Roland to talk about some other news and events. Thanks, Anna. Yeah, um, and, and really just to, to put a point on it, a, a large goal of IST is to play well with everyone in Cosmos, right? I think it's really important if IST is the primary stable token that you're using that wherever you want to be in Cosmos, DeFi, NFTs, um, whatever else is happening, that IST is available there for you. And that's that's really how we see it driving value for users. So we're going to you know, continue to work with teams that are interested in bringing IST into their zones and um, and actively seek out new zones that are that are coming out and make sure that this is an option. They they know this is an option for them uh, because really that's that's sort of how we see IST uh, growing and providing the most value to everyone, which really is our goal. Um, so so with that, um, I'll, I'll talk about uh, bounties a little bit as well. So uh, uh, there have been. So Agoric, Agoric Opco on the on the Agoric side has been putting a bounty process together for a while, and we've been operating bounties. But really, for IST, that process is, um, will will transition or sort of evolve uh, naturally external to Agoric, and so that is coming together uh, very soon. So uh, we're looking to support bounties uh, to start with. Uh, there may be bounties out to just connect IST to the various sites that track. Um, DeFi activity. So for example, DeFi Llama or Collab Land or, or something along those lines, um, those bounties will come out and uh, that process is getting put together. So I think largely uh, there are a lot of ideas for enhancements to IST that aren't part of the core vision of the Vault's release, but would be extremely valuable. And, and so we'd love to see third parties uh, come in to build those out. Third parties come in to, to suggest what should get built for IST. And so starting to facilitate a lot of that conversation and, uh, and new additional product direction is, is really exciting uh, for, for everyone here. Um, so again, you know, another another just ping if, if you're here listening to this and you've been thinking about stable coins, you've been thinking about how to sort of drive adoption or you've been wanting IST to support something in particular, um, you know, we would we'd love to see proposals come in for what those should look like, uh, specs come in for bounties, or if you're an engineer, uh, you know, actually building building them and, and coordinating with the team to uh, to get paid uh, because that would that would be great. Um, and then lastly, uh, so got a few events coming up. Um, and so Enter the Umiverse is coming up. Uh, there's a Twitter space on January 25th at 1 p.m. Eastern and 6, 6 p.m. UTC. Uh, so you heard Hannah say that um, there have been, uh, you know, continued work with Umi on getting IST listed uh, and support from their community as well, which has been great. Um, and then... Uh, the Inter Protocol team is going to be attending Interop uh, in Denver, uh, February 27th and 28th, which is getting put on by Axlar. So that's that's the event that sort of aligns with ETH Denver uh, out there on the Cosmos side. So uh, please come come say hi to the Inter Protocol team there, and really excited to to see all the other uh, Interop communities come together. Yeah, I'll just say something. Um... This is Youssef from the the Economic Committee of the IST Stablecoin. So uh, one thing we've been thinking of is uh, to collaborate with the, with Circle uh, to remove from the the, the PSM the the bridged uh, USDC. So uh, you know I think it it would be like a win win for for the two parties. So basically replace the the bridged USDC with native USDC. Uh, USDC is currently ninety percent of uh, IST collateral. So at the end of the day, if we can get to uh, to swap that, uh, we remove completely the the, the or like ninety percent of the bridge risk on on, on AST. And for Circle, I think it's a it's a good PR campaign. And uh, uh, we've had a few talks with uh, with Zaki, so we're just uh, currently uh, working on the on the on the details. Uh, and we also like for the, the the economic committee, we're also working towards. Choosing a destination where the uh, the EC members can meet up for the first time, um, and before the the launch of uh, of vaults, it's it's a bit challenging given our respective uh, location, uh, but we'll manage to uh, to be reunited at some point. 
That should be really exciting for you guys. And and for those in the community that don't know, the EC does have a weekly call, uh, but you're, you're all remote and in different time zones. So I, I know it's been challenging to actually meet each other. Yeah. Yeah, and, and very, I just echo the sentiment on native USDC. Um, very excited to have that. I, and I know that some of the comments we've gotten from the community, which are totally correct, is it's, it's tough to get backed um, to have um, bridge stable coins as the only backing. And so removing some of the bridge risk from the protocol uh, would certainly be uh, excellent. So we're all very excited for that. And we do have also an opportunity with the, with the, um... Uh, um, what's the name? Uh, Euro uh, stopping their their activities on on Cosmos. It's been announced like a few weeks ago. Uh, so I guess that some of that uh, used Euro is gonna is gonna rotate towards probably IC and other Cosmos native stablecoins. So that's that's a good thing for us. Totally agree. All right. Um, well, if there's no other community comments, um, you know, happy to, to take any questions that occur to you next month during the community call, but also would love to engage on Twitter, engage on in Discord um, with any questions, comments, ideas. Uh, it really, as the Vaults release comes together, InterProtocol um, is is getting a lot more robust. And so we're, we're really excited about um, what's coming down the pike for the, for the next couple months here. I um, would also encourage anyone that's joining these calls, you know, you're, you're a great candidate to help do some early user testing uh, and uh, help in, in particular, potentially also with the econ testing. So um, we'll have announcements in Discord about that and, and start to get that out to an early sort of smaller set of the community. So really, really appreciate everybody's help, everybody's participation uh, and everyone's ideas. So uh, I think with that, I will end it. Thanks, everybody.